guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And about a week or two ago, I did a video showing you guys how I teach a reading lesson. I brought you through the steps that I follow to teach a reading lesson. Well, today I'm going to do the same thing, but for math. And it's pretty much going to be the same um, formula for how I, you know, the steps that I take, except I'm adding in one more step. So um, when I did my, the reading lesson, um, I told you that there were two steps. First, I did instruction, and then um, I did application. So first, I instructed the students, and then I gave the application part where the students had to practice what they okay. learned. Well, in math, um, I'm going to add one more step to this, and the first thing that I do in math is we do a warm-up. So, um, for a math lesson, these are the three steps I follow. Warm up, then instruction, and then application. All right, so I'm gonna show you now how I do that. Okay, so first thing we do is the warm up. And the warm up is basically just a memory practice to get their brains thinking mathematically. And so what I do when we do warm up is I usually always have some type of flashcards. A lot of times it's my, um, touch point math cards because I can do a lot of different warm up activities with these. Um, right now I have out the flower themed ones because it's springtime, but I have different themed um, touch point cards. And if you have never heard of touch point math or seen my video on touch point math, I will try to remember to leave a link below to this. But what we can do for a warm up with these is um, I can just put one in front of the child and I'll say add three. And so he'll have to say nine or, um, Add two, seven, or so on. Or I can even, we can practice um, some subtraction. So subtract two, six. Okay, so I can just give them a card and do that. I can give them two cards and say add. So I can do, you know, add. And then he would have to say three. And we just kind of do it really fast, practicing some addition and subtraction to get their minds thinking. I can give them three cards and I can say, put in order from greatest to least, just really quick. You know, so he'd have to do something like that. Or give them three cards, four, three or four cards, and put them in order from least, or from, yeah, from greatest to least. <laughs> so, you know, something like that. So you can do a lot of different things just with um, number cards, and especially the touch point cards. Um, and especially what I like is that when we use these, then he can use his touch points if he needs them. So if I give him two cards and I say add, he can go, okay, I know I have six, and then I, he can touch seven, eight, and then he can add it up. So we just do that really quick as part of our warm up. The next thing we do is I pull out the um, reference charts that I have from my early learners math curriculum. And we always use this reference chart. This is the 100 chart from um, the unit on counting 200. And every single um, day as a warm up, we count to 100. We also do things like, um, I will ask him questions like, um, show me the sum of four and four. And then he would touch eight, or he can even use a manipulative and cover up eight really quick. Okay, and then I can say, um, show me a number that is 10 more than eight. And so he would cover up 18 and so on. Um, so we just do little warm ups like that with our 100 chart, but always, of course, practicing um, counting to 100. That's important as far as um, kindergarten goes. Okay, and then another warm up I do is I pull out the reference charts for whatever we have already learned and then what we are currently going to learn. So. Um, we have finished the unit on graphing and data, and so um, I have those um, charts here. These are from my early learners math curriculum, like I said, and uh, I print in my I print my charts um, two to a page. That's why they look maybe smaller than yours might, um, because I didn't I don't need big giant charts since um, I'm not in the classroom anymore. I'm just at home, so um, I just print them off half sheets, and then um, for this this specific set, I attached them to a ring like this, and then um, this subtraction set, I threw them in um, just plastic sleeves. And I may take them out and cut them and do what I did here um, with these as well, but I just haven't yet. Okay, so since we've already finished this, what I will do is I will hold up the charts and then he will have to 
um, explain to me in his own words um, what it is. So I'll say, what's a bar graph? And then he has to kind of explain to me in his own words what a bar graph is. And I have it written here, um, you know, if we need to refer to it, if he forgets something. Um, of course, and then I will hold up the pie graph and he will quickly have to tell me what a pie graph is in his own words, what a tally chart is in his own words, and what a pictograph is in his own words. So this is just a quick review of what we've already learned. So we're still in our warm-up phase and then the last part of the warm-up phase is um, we're working on subtraction right now. Um, he is already pretty proficient in subtraction, but I'm showing you just to give you an example. So what you would do is you would take out um, the charts that would be for the unit that you're working on, and um, then you would go over some of those. So we would pick one, let's say we're going to do the subtraction from, um, from five, and um, he would have to recite five minus five equals zero, five minus four equals one, five minus three equals two, five minus two equals three, 5 minus 1 equals 4, 5 minus 0 equals 5. And we won't do all the charts every day for our warm-up, but we'll just pick one like I did here. Um, and so that is what we will do. And then we will move on to the instruction. Okay, so let's say your instruction was that you were just introducing subtraction. Now my son is already knows what subtraction is, and he's, he's gotten pretty proficient. But if you were just introducing it, um, let's say you're doing your instruction. For, for my purposes, I would not have to do much instruction today because we are doing um, subtraction, but he already has had the instruction part, so we'd probably actually move right into the application. But I'm going to show you the instruction just um, for the purposes of this video. Okay, so what you would do is you would, um, you just need some counters, and you would say, okay, today we're going to talk about subtraction. You already know about addition. Addition is when we add um, to a number and we make more. Subtraction is when we take away from a number and we make less. So um, what you would do is you just have some counters and some numbers. I'm gonna use my touch point numbers here and let's just say we're gonna start with five. And you would tell the child, take out five counters. So they can count one, two, three, four, five. And then you can give them another number and say, all right, we're going to take away two of those counters. So then they would take away two. How many are left? Three, so they're understanding the concept that subtraction is taking away, and then your answer is how many you have left after you have taken away the number. So then you can introduce the number sentence. So five minus two equals three. So you would show them how they would go, they could go ahead and write that number. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on my um, whiteboard right here using my touch point cards, and I'm gonna say five minus two equals three. And I could show them that just as you've learned how to write an addition sentence or an addition problem, subtraction problem looks a lot the same except we have a new symbol. And this is the subtraction symbol. So you know the addition symbol looks like this. Now we have the takeaway symbol or the subtraction symbol that looks like this. And they will understand that because they've already learned addition. Um, and then um, you can even uh, work with your touch point cards. If you have a student that has been used to using their touch point cards for addition, you can practice that with subtraction. You can say, okay, you start with five. Now, instead of adding on two more, we're gonna subtract two of our dots and we're only gonna count the other ones. So instead of counting these two, we're gonna only count these. One, two, three. So now five minus two equals three. Or another way to do it is say I start with five and then I count backwards as I touch. So five, four, three. My answer is, you know, three. Okay, so they can still use their touch point cards for subtraction as long as they're counting backwards. So let's say we start with six and we're going to subtract three. Well, let's subtract a different number so we get a different answer. Okay, so two. So um, we start with six and we're gonna count back two, six, five, four, so our answer then would be four. So that would be your instruction part of the um, subtraction, and now I'm gonna show you the application part. So now we are on the last part, which is the application, and this is the fun part. This is the part where the kids get to do some hands-on work to practice what they have learned. And um, so what I did is I pulled out the subtraction activity centers um, from my early learners math curriculum, the unit on subtraction. Now we don't do every single activity center every day, but I will show you a few and we will do probably, we usually do about two of them a okay, day. Okay, so this activity center is um, working on word problems. And this is great for conceptual learning. I love word problems for that because students have to think about real world situations and why we would use subtraction. 
So um, the first one here, they're, they're cards basically, and the kids can use dry erase markers with them to figure out the answers. This one here says Kate had seven balloons. Five of them popped, how many are left? So she has seven balloons, five of them popped. So the child is going to have to cross out one, two, three, four, five, two are left. And then they're going to have to remember how to put that into a number sentence as th that they learned during the instruction part of the lesson. So, okay, she had seven, we start with the bigger number. We took away five because five of them popped and then she has two left. Okay, and then that's just, they'll just continue going on. Here's one that's already done. Um, but they'll continue going on just doing some more of these as time allows. Okay, this next activity center is called Spaghetti Subtraction. Um, again, all of these activity centers are from my Early Learners Math Curriculum. I will leave a link below where you can get um, just the unit on subtraction if you want, or you can save and get the entire curriculum. Um, but I'll leave links below. So this activity um, comes with cards that look like this, and then it comes with these spaghetti um, cards. And what the kids do is they flip over a subtraction card so this one says seven minus one, and then they use their spaghetti cards to figure out the answer. Now this one's easy, but um, a child may still need to visualize it. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna put out seven cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it says subtract one, so they'll flip one over, how many are left? Six are left, and then the last step is to use a manipulative and cover up the number six on their spaghetti subtraction. Uh, map. And so I just have my counting bears here, so that's just what I'm going to use today. But you could use anything you wanted to, to cover up. If you had um, spaghetti erasers, that would be like the cutest thing ever. I don't have any of those, but they make erasers for everything. And so um, that would be like the super cutest thing to use with this. But anyway, um, so then they would just keep going. So they flip over another one. Eight minus four. So we're going to start with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to subtract four. They'd flip over four cards. Three, four, how many are left? Four, and so they would cover up number four. And they just kind of keep going until they've covered up um, all the numbers on their mat. And uh, if they get an answer that's already covered up, they just go to the next card and keep going so they can cover up their entire spaghetti subtraction mat. Okay, this next activity center I'm gonna show you um, is a, you, many of you have probably seen it. It's the Play-Doh Subtraction Activity Center, and actually I need to erase some of this. You can kind of see where my son has already written on here. Um, but, uh, let me flip some of these around. So anyways, uh, if you haven't seen this one, what I have them do first is they um, give them a little bit of Play-Doh and have them roll out a whole bunch of little balls of Play-Doh. So I do that first. I give them a couple minutes to roll out some balls of Play-Doh. And then they take a card. So there are a whole bunch, as you can see here, different cards for them to practice subtracting. And um, what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at the subtraction problem here. I have six minus three, so we're going to fill up six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then it says subtract three. So what they do is they smash three of them. They love doing this. One, two, three. How many are left? I have um, three left because I smashed three. And then they just use their dry erase mark to write their answer on their card like so. And when they're done, they can go on to the next one. So two minus one. So anyways, you can just see the different combinations here that I have for the kiddos to practice. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you one more activity center. Um, we, I have plenty more uh, subtraction activity centers in this unit um, because you wanna be able to have many days of practice. Uh, and we, redo, uh, we do reuse activity centers if we need to. So um, we don't just do them one time, we do them over and over again. And uh, the kids don't seem to get bored with it. It's really good practice. Okay, so for this one, um, they are making sailboats, and so what they do is they take uh, the top of a sailboat, and it has, they count how many shells it has, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, minus three, they're gonna subtract three by crossing them out. So nine minus three equals one, two, three, four, five, six left. And then what they're going to do is they're gonna look through the bottom parts of the sailboats to find their answer. Here's my answer, and then once they put it together, just like so, it will have a sailboat. 
Isn't that cute? So they can just keep on going. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six minus five is going to be one left. And then again, they're gonna look through the bottom pieces. You may not wanna give them all of them at once. May give them, maybe just give them three ch uh, choices, especially if they're a re really young student who's just learning about subtraction, and they don't have to flip through so many uh, answer choices. But anyway, so that's what they would do with this activity center. And then the last thing is, um, if we have time, I will probably have them do one um, interactive worksheet from this unit. So here's one I pulled out. And uh, what the kids would do with this one is he would cut out the pieces and use these pe dog pieces to um, subtract from five. So uh, he could, five minus three, he would move his pieces around, take three away to see what his answer was and write it down. Um, so yeah, so there are 10 um, interactive worksheets with each unit as well. So I, if we had time after the activity centers, another part of the application process of um, applying what they learned is to do, you know, an interact, interactive worksheet. So um, we don't do them every day, but we do them, you know, we, we try to do one a day, but not, it doesn't always happen, especially if the um, worksheet, not worksheet, especially if the um, Activity centers are taking us a while. So that is it. That is how I teach a math lesson. So there you go. There's a math lesson on subtraction. You can apply this method to anything that you are teaching um, in math. So you want to do your warm up, you want to do your um, instruction, and then you want to do your application. Some days we We'll skip the instruction part. If they already know it and we're just doing a review, then we'll just do our warm up and we'll do our application and that's it. Um, but anyways, that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, leave me a comment below or hit that like and uh, subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.